Hey everybody, Josh KI6NAZ. A month ago, I was talking about the firmware upgrade for the IC705, the version 1.20, and in it, there is an access point mode that lets you run. This is kind of like a Wi-Fi hotspot. So with just your radio and your laptop, you can connect, be portable, no wires, and run digital modes, as well as voice and all kinds of other stuff. And today, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Before I throw this over to the workbench and show you how this is all done, there is one caveat and one caveat alone to make this all work. Well, I guess two. You must have the firmware installed for the 705. You can, must own one as well. And you need the RS-BA1 software that is sold by ICOM. It must be loaded, and what's gonna happen with that, you're gonna get two pieces of software out of it, and the one we're gonna be using is the ICOM remote utility. With that tool, you'll be able to log in basically to the server that's running, the user server that's running on the 705, and that allows you full control of the radio. All right, let's flip it on over to the workbench and show you how this is done. Okay, so our goal today is to configure a remote connection server mode, and then, depending on what kind of connection you're on, either connecting to a wireless access point that already exists, like in your home, or make this the access point, than your computer to connect to it directly. Let me show you the first part. Click on Menu, then go to Settings, and we're gonna go down to WLAN Set. Now, you'll normally see this come up this way. I'm gonna turn WLAN off. So it's just straight up off, and I'm gonna scroll down to Remote Settings. This is what turns this into a server. So Network Control, which you will have to restart the radio after you turn this on, Leave it on if you have it on. This turns on the network control function. Think of it like a remote server configuration. I leave everything default, so these are the ports that it's going to use for configuring control port, serial port, and audio port. It's 50,001, 50,002, 50,003. Leave it alone. For internet access line, I leave FTTH alone. I actually have not played with the ADSL CAT TV. You may have to play with that, but I don't know. You can set two users here. I made a simple one, it's just HRCC. It requires more than four characters. I believe it requires six characters, and so I just made it HRCC, HRCC twice. I'm not giving away any details here. You're not getting anything out of that. And then you can say, uh, network administrator, uh, administrator, I leave to yes. I didn't set the second one, but you could if you had another computer or something else you wanted to do. For network name, that's just the stock name, IC705. Now, once you've done that and you turn it on, now this device, when connected to Wi-Fi, like your home Wi-Fi, or when it's functioning as an access point, you can connect a device to this, like a laptop or whatever it is you're running that's running the appropriate software. Now, go back up to connection type. If I say station, that means it's going to connect. This is functioning as a station. It's just a user on the Wi-Fi. If you click on connect to network, It'll go in and it'll try to find a station, access point mode, click that, and you should see the list come up. But right now, Wi-Fi is off. So I'm going to do station first, so I'm going to click on. I'm going to go to station. It's on. I'm going to go to connection settings. We're going to go access point. And it's going to say, hey, look, there's my access point. So it connects. It's connected. Okay. Now, at that point, that's pretty much all you'd have to do from the network as aspect. But if you wanted to flip this around, so let me turn the uh, WLAN off again. I want to make this an access point, meaning this is now the Wi-Fi server. It doesn't provide internet, it just provides access to the 705 for controlling the radio and for the audio that's coming in and out. I'm going to go into access point. So I've changed the access point. Now connection setting says access point. Go into that. You're going to make an SSD, so that's like your Wi-Fi SSD. Default is IC705, so I set that. I also made the password HRCC, HRCC, the same as the server. Okay. Now, inactivity WAN off timer, I did leave that to 20 minutes. The reason why you might want to do that is if you're running this on batteries. You may actually want to reduce that down further. IP address is something you set. So 192.168.59.1 is the IP address for the server, which is now this unit. So if I go back into WLAN and I turn it on, now we are in access point mode. It is on and it shows on the screen, if you go out, your Wi-Fi button, which normally wouldn't have this box around it, 
now has a little gray box notifying you that this is now functioning as an access point server. So if you had a computer or something like that, you can connect to it with your laptop, tablet, whatever you have, so long as it has the capability of running the ICOM software. Okay, last step, and this is, this is something that will get people confused, so I'm going to cover it right now because it's important. Go to Set, go to Connectors, okay? And this is the top of the menu. We're going to go down one. We're going to go to Mod Input, Modulated Input. Click Input. Now, under Data Off Mod, I leave that on Mic and USB. But for Data Mod, because I'm going to use the WLAN, you must select WLAN. Otherwise, this will not work. And these are the options you have, Mic, USB, and Mic and USB. If you're planning to go in the field and you're just going to connect data via USB, then just leave it Mic, USB, or leave it just USB. But if you're going to use the WLAN, you must select WLAN. Otherwise, this whole thing won't work. This is kind of like the last thing you got to do. Or the first thing, just make sure you do it. Otherwise, this won't work. But you have to be cognizant of this. So maybe you write it down somewhere. I don't know. So that you remember to set this back to USB if you want to go use USB. Because what's going to happen is when you put this radio into data mode and you're trying to feed it, or it thinks you're going to feed it with wireless LAN data, but you're feeding it over USB, it's not going to work. And you're going to be really confused. And it's going to be really frustrating. So that's all you have to do on the radio. Now, uh, I'm going to flip it over to my computer and I'm going to show you what I do to set up the software. And you do have to use RSB, uh, RSBA1 software, the ICOM software, to make this work, get you that last little bit of the way. Hey, if this is helpful to you, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm and shows that these videos should be in front of other people. As well, I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we talk about all kinds of different things, news and reviews and discussions on ham radio. I also will stream every other Wednesday for Ham Nation, and that's 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you click that bell, you'll get all the notifications when I upload my standalone videos like this one and all my live streams. And I appreciate you doing that. Okay, so on the PC side of the house, it's pretty straightforward to set this up. Uh, you're going to run the RSBA1, not the control remote software. You're going to run the remote utility. And that's all you're going to have to run to make this work if you want to do digital modes. So I already have the 7300, but I'm going to set up a new radio and I want to go set up for a remote PC, a radio with the server function, okay? This top box here, the one with the dude with the cloud and there's just a radio with a little antenna on it. So I'm gonna click that guy. It's gonna bring me up a little uh, wizard here. I'm gonna click on that. So it's gonna ask you for the server address or network name. If you are running off of a Wi-Fi network, you're gonna need to type in the IP address of the device. If you are running into the radio which is running as an access point then you're going to use like the IC-705. Uh, we are on my stream computer it only has an Ethernet connection no Wi-Fi so I'm going to use the IP address into just the Wi-Fi connection but the connection is the same. Okay so on my home network which by the way if you're using access point the radio will show you its IP address. You just use that IP address, which is going to be like a dot one that it ends in. Just use that one. So I'm going to do 192.168.50.180. Okay. Remember, it's still using the 50,001, and it's HRCC. Yours is going to be different unless you make yours like mine. And HRCC, HRCC is the password. And it's going to go through this connecting to server. All right, so now we are connected to the 705. If I click connect, there you go. Ah, it's complaining that I don't have a virtual COM port selected. You definitely want to set that and set it to something that is going to be far away enough from other ports you have. So I'll just set it to 15 right now to make it easy. So it's set it to virtual COM port uh, 15. And now you should be hearing audio because the audio is going to get ported from the 705 right into the computer. So that's nice. Now, if at any time that gets really annoying, the remote server software kind of takes control. If I just hit mute on my computer, it wouldn't mute this audio. You have to click on AF right there. Click on AF and the volume slider is right there. So now we're in control. If you hit mute, 
then it go ahead and mutes the whole thing. Okay, so you've got your audio all set uh, on the output in your ears, uh, but, but we're not done yet. So we need to go to modulator button or mod. And right now we're saying that the default device is the microphone. That's your computer's microphone. But we don't want to use the computer's microphone. We want to use virtual audio. And it says ICOM Virtual Audio 2. So we're going to click on that. And we're going to click close. You're going to have to switch this back and forth. You're going to have to remind yourself to be able to switch back and forth to do this. Because once you open up something like JSA Call, you're going to use that mod option. But if you want to do just SSB voice or something like that, you're going to have to switch it back to the microphone on your computer. Now, believe it or not, that's all you need to do if you want to set up a digital mode. So let's go ahead and use JSA Call. OK. So I'm going to go to Configuration, and I'm going to make a clone of the 7300 configuration. And I'm going to go OK. Actually, I'm going to cancel out of this, make sure we're in config. OK, we're in the copy. Let's rename it to 705. And let's make sure we have 705 selected. We'll switch to that. Now, it's going to complain, yep, yeah, because uh, obviously the connections are all wrong. So hopefully you remembered some of those settings. We're going to bring up the configuration for J JSA call. We're going to go to radio. Uh, I'm going to change this to the ICOM 7300. Now, um, eventually, JSA call, and it may even have a version out that will do uh, connection to the 705. WSJTX, I think, is working on that. Already, already has it. But uh, I've found that I just leave it at 7300. Of course, I have the CIV ID set to 94 on my 705, which is the CIV ID for the 7300. I thought it might be helpful to show you how to do the CIV control thing. So uh, go to menu and you need to set this because otherwise this it won't work uh, for the CIV connection. And that's the commanding cat control stuff. So go to connectors, go to CIV, CIV address. Okay, I have this set to 94. That's the same address as the 7300. There's really no difference in the computer control so long as you use the same CIV address. So to make it easy, I just set this to 94. Eventually, though, when the application starts supporting the 705 natively, you will need to set this back to default. I'm going to make cat control. We're going to change that COM port to 15, which is right down there. And I'm going to change this to 9600, 8 is the settings and you can screenshot this if you need this exactly stop bits is one hand shake is default and let's do a test and it turned green so we have cat control now we'll go to rig options and we'll go to cat for ptt method is what we want we want to be in data and packet mode i leave split operation to fake it but you could use rig and then i'm gonna hit ptt and looking at the radio we are ptt -ing. all right so you have your radio configured for cat control and ptt but you got to do the audio too so make sure you click audio and you want it to match the con the connection for what we just shown on the remote utility. So make sure you have ICOM V audio two. You may have other V audios, but you want to use the one that the app called for. So click two, click okay. So now you got two. Now looking at your 705, click tune. And there you go, you see a big tune on there. Now, what I would do at that point is you still gotta do all the JSA call things, all the digital things that I talked about and look at my top five tips for doing digital uh, digital radio over a computer. Change it over to the meter function on your radio and then do a tune again. And your ALC might be really high, so just dial it back down with the control right there and you should be good to go. Of course, make sure that your SWR is also within a respectable range. And then go ahead and find an empty spot somewhere in the frequency space. It'll adjust it for you. And click Heartbeat and ACK. You'll start transmitting. Looks like my SWR and my ALC is solid. So maybe we'll get a report right now. I am transmitting out of my 705 right now. <laughs> Let's hope it all works. Because this is supposed to be a demonstration of it working, right? I am only putting out 10 watts though, so who knows? <laughs> who knows? Looks like there may be something right there. Hey, I got a heartbeat. I got two heartbeats. A negative, ooh, three heartbeats. Negative eight, negative 21, and a negative 11. I'll take it. So my station is configured. 
correctly. All right, so I hope that helps those of you who want this wireless connection. It, it works great. I, I've had a lot of fun doing it. I need to spend a little bit more time with it to know kind of what the increased battery draw will be. Inevitably, running the WLAN device is going to suck up a little more juice on the battery here than if you were just running it without that turned on. So, you know, a little more work to do, but you know, this will get you going and then you can find out for yourself. And if you do find out, or if you have any other comments, please post them below in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Again, I appreciate that thumbs up and subscribing if you have not already. Until I talk to you again, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. See you later. All right, so a bit of a spoiler here for the end of the video. I use this OXO or OXO. This is a laptop electronics brush, but it's got this cool rubber eraser. Um, and you take this, right? You just go around the screen and it cleans up all the fingerprints. So when you do a video showing the screen, people don't complain that uh, it's all greasy. <laughs> with your fingerprints. So it does a pretty good job. And you can clean it off. Look at that. Nice.